okay so uh, hi friends uh, uh, so today's topic that i'm going to speak on is uh, open source databases on azure uh, we will deep dive into the details of the service what offerings do we have there and i will also discuss about some features of the service and some uh, uh, i would say some enterprise level scalability features that we provide which can be leveraged to increase the scalability of your uh, web systems or your back end systems as well right so first to introduce myself uh, i am uh, naginder singh virdi i am a technical specialist in microsoft singapore um uh, and i i i uh, started my career as a c sharp uh, developer then into support and went into databases and all uh, right now i am also learning python i am also learning few other uh, i would say uh, pl sql pg pl sql languages so because of that i think i call myself confused coder because i am not sticking to one language uh, this is my github page where i put lot of scripts and demos into uh this is my linkedin uh, url in case if you guys want to connect with me on linkedin you can connect there right so let's begin with the uh, uh, session now so open source databases on my uh, microsoft azure right these are the three flavors which are currently offered which is mysql uh, postgres sql and my sql uh, and maria db right these are the three different flavors of databases that are offered as a community edition and when i say community edition it's not a fork it's uh, uh, it's a direct out and out uh, extension of the open source code which means all the open source uh, flavors all the open source features which the co community contributes to can be leveraged on this platform right uh apart from uh, offering the uh, managed community mysql or postgres sql or maria db right what benefit that you get out of uh, azure is the capability of uh, elastic scaling with the high availability we will talk about high availability a little later and we will talk about scalability also so you get out of the box scalability features you get out of the box high availability in fact this service is the only service in the market which is 99.99% uh, sla driven apart from being highly available and scalable it is also a secure and a compliant uh, service which i will talk about a little later as well and then you get the uh, possibility of deploying this across 56 regions of azure wherever azure is available uh, as a data center or as a region this service is available and you can deploy there uh, across the whole world and the other best part is is it is integrated with lot of uh, the azure other services ecosystems be it serverless computing be it cognitive services or many other uh, capabilities that are offered on azure these service are easily integrated into them right moving ahead uh, let's go into a deep dive into the product so in the deep dive what i will do is i will go through the detail of the service the architecture behind the service how do we offer you as a, a community edition how do we offer the high availability and the scalability in the product right we'll go a little deep into the architecture uh, of the databases on azure and then i will get into some of the features and some demos that i have for you so um, before we get into the uh, details of the database service i want you to understand the whole model in which the service is deployed on azure right so typically whenever you have a azure subscription there is an account which is linked to that subscription right within the subscription you can have multiple resource groups and within these resource groups you can deploy the postgres sql or mysql databases a uh, server and within each server you can have multiple databases so let me show you what i'm talking about here right so essentially this is my azure uh, portal you will see uh, this is my account through which i am logged in i am the owner uh, of this uh, uh, subscription 
and you will see i have a lot of subscription under my uh, uh, account so you will be able to see from here if i go into the subscription these are the different subscriptions that i have uh, right now because of the global filter you will only see one but if i go into these uh, directories here i have these many uh, subscription which i am part of right some of them are uh, uh, customer subscription where i am working on pocs or some of them are uh, uh, my own uh, demo uh, subscription but what you see here is basically every account has multiple subscription within subscriptions you can have multiple resource group like what you see here and within resource group you can deploy as many as postgre or mysql servers like what you say see here this is a resource group mysql rg within that i have deployed two mysql databases server and if i go into one database uh, server you will within that you will see i have multiple databases right so you, these are all the databases that are there in the mysql uh, server right and uh, within that uh, databases then you have your database objects like tables and views so nothing uh, different than what you deploy on prem right on prem you deploy a, a server on a on a virtual machine or something like that and then you have the capability of creating multiple databases into it same uh, uh, same concept applies here as well okay now let me go a little uh, deeper into how do you access them right now the accessibility could be through azure portal as you see here what i am doing right i am able to uh, connect to my mysql server i can look at all the databases i can do things like uh, i can add an active directory admin i can configure replication here i can even do a restore backup and restore from here right i can even restart my server i can delete my server i can monitor my server right all that capability is possible through the portal you can also do the same thing through azure cli right what azure cli offers you is a powershell command line through which you can look at what are the different uh, um, uh, uh, server postgre or mysql servers here i will show you a quickly demo of that uh for now i am in, uh logged into my uh, login account or oh, sorry so you will see i am logged into my subscription here and i can do something like this i can say show me the uh, sir, uh postgre servers that i have in my subscription and it will take some time and it will list all the postgre servers that i have in the account so this is what you can do right you can either connect through the portal you can connect through the azure clis you can connect through apis through your connect uh, custom management apps or you can use any application client through mysql or postgre sql drivers or database tools like uh, mysql workbench right that's a very popular tool you can use that to connect to your uh, mysql database also uh, i will move ahead by the time the workbench connects but here you can see see here i am connecting through a typical uh, mysql workbench right i can connect to a database i can co fire queries on them just like you normally do in your uh, on prem servers right similarly for postgres Uh, same things available even for maria db same thing is available right now let's talk about uh, the availability and performance as i said this is the only service in the cloud market which offers you a built in 99.99% availability and not just that we give you the abil ability to scale it uh, the server up and down in a matter of seconds uh and even you can increase things like uh, storage or any other need for that matter i will quickly show you what it looks like here if you see i have a mysql server i can click on the pricing tier i have the ability to increase the cores on the fly right i can go up to 64 core i can go up to general purpose to memory optimize as i wish and the moment i click okay it will take few seconds and your server is now 
uh, on the new uh, configuration that you configure it to be right and it also gives you what is the price that uh, expected price that you will pay uh, for that particular uh, uh, hardware cost right and you can even increase the storage here you can go up to 16 terabytes right uh, that is uh, the amount of scalability that we offer, right? Now let's talk about how this is possible, right? It is very important to understand uh, when we say 99.99% uh, 99 .99 availability, how do we offer that, right? Uh, this is the, typically an architecture of how the uh, Azure offers the databases uh, so essentially, when you deploy a MySQL or a PostgreSQL, what we do is we deploy a proprietary container technology that Azure has into the cloud, uh, into the data center where you've chosen that, and the data is uh, created on the Azure blob storage in the premium file storage, right? So what we have done is we have decoupled the storage and the compute layer. Now, what I mean by that is typically when you install a server, a database server on a hardware, the CPU and the storage is tightly coupled on that server, right? Uh, even if it is a SAN, uh, it is tightly coupled, which means you cannot take that SAN off and uh, attach it to a different MySQL server and everything works fine. No, that is never going to happen, right? Until and unless you've created a cluster or something like that. Uh, so, in, if a uh, MySQL server is not in the quorum or not in a cluster, you cannot detach the volume and attach it to some other uh, MySQL client and it will not work until unless you use the native commands, right? But here what we do is we use the container technology very similar to what you know about the dockers and the containers, right? But it is a proprietary Microsoft container technology that we have. Uh, which gets deployed onto the uh, the data center, and we use the underlying blob storage to create the database copy. So at any point of time, due to the uh, premium file storage capability, we keep three copies of your data available, right? Which means if one of the copy of your data goes uh, bad or goes corrupt, uh, the storage, the storage layer will automatically spin up a new uh, data volume for you and automatically replicate the data there to avoid any data loss, right? So this gives you the capability of um, uh, zero data loss uh, from that perspective, right? So your data is always secure on Azure, always available. Uh, anything happens to the disk, we will spin up a new uh, storage volume and uh, copy the data there, and you don't have to worry about data loss. Now, let's say what happens about the compute, right? Your com uh, you will see that your clients, whether it's a Postgre or a MySQL client, never connects to the compute directly. It goes through what is called as a gateway, and again, this is region-wide. Uh, there is a cluster of gateways which is available in every region of uh, Azure. You, whenever you connect, even even when I'm connecting through my client here, right? You don't connect to the compute directly. What you are connecting to is the gateway, and the gateway redirects your connection to the MySQL server, uh, uh, to the right MySQL or PostgreSQL compute layer. Right now, let's say something happens to this compute layer and it goes uh, down. What Azure will do is it will quickly spin up a new container, attach the volume to that new container, and your gateway can redirect to the new uh, container in matter of seconds. So this is how we provide the 99% 99.99% 99 .99 built-in I availability in the database server. Right now, imagine something happens on your on-prem server and your uh, database server goes down. Uh, what do you do? Right, you typically have a replica created uh, to, or you have the database server in cluster. You try to manage that, but here on the on the Azure, none of that is needed. We will manage it using the container technology in the background. You don't have to worry about the availability. We give you the four nines of uh, SLAs for you. 
all you have to be uh, uh, careful about is how do you connect from your application to the uh, server right so you you need to have some retry logic written in your application because there will be a brief disconnection of 5 to 10 seconds whenever a compute layer goes down uh, but it's just a matter of 5 to 10 second and that is where we say that always keep a retry logic in your application right so this is essentially the architecture any uh, questions or any concerns still here You guys can still see my screen, right? Any questions? I think this is these questions are for the previous uh, session. Okay, I will continue. If you guys have any question, do stop me and let me know. The same thing applies to whenever you're trying to scale the um, scale it to a higher uh, uh, server. Uh, threshold for that matter let's say you want to go from 8 cores to 16 cores right uh, behind the scene your clients are still connected to the gateway uh, we will create a new uh, uh, cluster a new compute your client will redirect the your the gateway will redirect the connection to the new uh, compute layer and you now have a new uh, higher resource of server available for you right so all this happens behind the scene behind the gateway your applications don't need to change any connection string you don't need to change any uh, uh, any redirection logic or ips on the on the dns or dh uh, dns server or anything of that sort right you connect to a host name uh, and that's it right uh, from the back end azure will manage that now let's get to the security part right uh, these are some of the certification that we have secured for the database services which are running on azure apart from that we give you a lot of security features as well right for example we give you native authentication capability uh, postgre sql mysql sql server comes with their own authentication capability that we provide we don't have we don't have built uh, we haven't built any other uh, i would say our own authentication methodology there uh, what we offer over and above that is something called as threat detection right what this means uh, is uh, with this uh, we will uh, give you capability where we can identify anonymous connections to your database or things like brute force attack uh, into your database all those things can be identified by that other than that we give you ssl layer uh, connectivity uh, there are server fire rules firewall rules which are available i heard somebody okay we give you firewall rules i will talk about firewall rules a little later you can even connect uh, your database uh, database servers to a virtual network uh there is a private link also which is uh, i will explain that a little later uh from protection data protection capability we give you built in encryption at rest now this can be done through system manage keys or your you can manage those keys also so data uh, at rest or backups everything is encrypted as well right so these are some of the security cap capabilities now let's talk about the vnet service endpoints uh, till here any questions Okay, quite uh, um, the whole crowd is very uh, <laughs> quiet. Uh, please proceed. Uh, yeah, yeah, I will. There is a question. Maybe you can answer them. But by the time I will complete the session, I will try to answer them also. Okay. So VNet service endpoint is essentially. Let's say if you have a VNet. Uh, I hope you know what VNet is, right? Essentially, VNet is nothing but a virtual network. where you create resources within that network and anybody else from outside don't have access to that you can pair you can create a vnet gateway and pair your on premises network with this now essentially what happens is that at the uh, if you want that uh, uh, from this network only specified uh, resources can connect to your uh, database server and nothing nobody from outside of internet can connect to it you can enable what is called as vnet service endpoints 
and then you whitelist those service endpoints to your uh, vnet firewall and then all the resources within this uh, network which has the firewall enabled would be able to connect to the database services you will have to create uh, acls for that and essentially what you allow doing here is you only allow the resources within the vnet or within your on premises to connect to the database server nobody from the internet can connect right now but there is a catch here whenever you create a endpoint right what uh, azure will do is it will still go over the internet to connect to this uh, service there is a uh, there is a private ip which is created which connects to these database servers still nobody else outside of the internet can connect but your connection is still going over the internet right lot of people say that this is not acceptable to them then what you can create is you can create what is called as a private link in this what happens is that you create a private endpoint in a in, in a uh, in your vnet and from that vnet you create a private endpoint in your database server also and this connection happens over your uh, vpn or it happens over your uh, uh, you may have express route right the, uh, it connects through that even your on premises is routed through this direction uh, which means that no access to the internet even your connectivity goes through your backbone or the express, express route backbone and not through internet so this is the most secure way of connecting to the database and whereas your database servers are not exposed to the internet right so this feature is available uh, now and uh, you can explore this if you have uh, any compliance related issue where you say that i cannot expose my database servers on the internet apart from that we give you uh, backups which are built in you can choose anywhere from 7 to 35 days of backup and this is configurable configurable on the um, on the uh, on the server itself if you go to the pricing tier here you can define what number of backup retention you want and even within that you can have a locally redundant backup or a geo redundant backup right what uh benefit you get in the geo redundant is that you can in case if uh, your connectivity to the region goes down or let's say uh, out of some uh, reason the whole azure region goes down uh, you can still restore your back uh, database in another region using the geo redundant backup right so this is very good from a dr perspective make sure if you are using the databases on azure you enable them to uh, avoid any region wise uh, dr uh, failover okay so it and even let's say if you want to restore it is very simple you just go click on restore and you uh, you uh, restore it from there right i will show you a demo where i will Uh, create a new uh, server and i will also restore it from a backup in a in the later uh, time from the monitoring and capability you have uh, all the monitoring available i will show you a demo on this also essentially you can create your own dashboards uh, you can monitor lot of built in metrics that are given to you out of the box you can also stream these metrics into log analytics and you can run complex queries on that i will show you that also a little later right you can even th do things like uh, create alerts on certain things right now this is a dba favorite our database administrators will mo mostly they don't sit in front of the servers and monitor it right they would like to configure automatic alerts whenever the cpu or storage is let's say 80% 70% they want to uh, get an alert right that kind of capability is available here also i will show you a demo here uh, on that also apart from that if you want to do performance tuning right the default um, uh, mysql or postgre uh, standard database engineering monitor engine monitoring is available typically in mysql you might have worked with performance underscore schema uh, views right there you get lot of uh, stats and activity details session details similarly in postgre we offer the pg stat statement pg buffer active uh, cache pg stats underscore activity all those uh, views are available to you by default 
and you can monitor them uh, for any performance related issues as well right i will uh, i will try to show you a simple demo in this if we have the time uh, let's go ahead uh, so essentially you can also enable what is called as server logs right if you are a mysql dba or a postgre dba you know what server logs are right similarly here also you can configure server logs and you can monitor uh, uh, that server logs with a uh, lot of other things i will show you a little uh, de uh, demo here but you will see that you can download the server logs from here uh, this is my mysql server i think i have not configured for mysql but i have definitely configured for postgre so this is again my postgre uh, server on the uh, on the on the azure and if i click into postgres server i can download the server logs and monitor it there right so let's say if i want to see what is happening here this is the latest log that is available to me right so typically this is what you uh, see and you will see i am i am uh, logging lot of details for example every select every statement i am log uh, logging into that every time a person logs into uh postgres sql i am logging that also so all those details can be configured here similar to postgres right so these are these are some server parameters which you will see a little later where you can configure lot of different capabilities this is the log analytics which i was talking about i will show you a demo on this basically what you are doing is all these logs all these metrics that the server is uh, spewing out you can uh, you can configure them to go into either a storage account which you can use for uh, uh, analysis later you can even stream it to event sub uh, which is a, a, a subscriber uh, uh, subscriber and producer subscriber kind of a uh, thing that uh, available on the azure or you can uh, uh, send it to log analytics also i will show you a log analytics demo a little later okay it's time to show you the demo so i will first show you how a service is created i will show you a small demo on backup and restore i will show you uh, a demo on monitoring and then i will show you a demo on diagnostic log as well uh, any questions okay so uh, all question answered let me go to uh, the details here so let's uh, do this what i will do is i will uh, i will create a new postgres sql uh, server on the azure and not just that i will do a geo restore from my existing postgres sql into that region right so what i'm going to do is uh, if you see on the screen this is a postgres sql uh, server that i have on my cloud which is right now in the southeast asia region right and this is the name of the server right and you will see that uh, i uh, typically i can connect through a normal uh, um, psql command here also i can say host name npg sql 1 dot uh, postgres dot database dot azure dot com and username is now virdi at Uh, npg sql 1 fully it connects oh i forgot to give the name of the database so i want to connect to this database dvd rental on my postgres sql okay i think i gave the password wrong right so typically uh, um, same uh, thing that you see on a normal um, uh, uh, postgres server right i am able to connect through a command line or any uh, pg admin or those kind of tools also you can use uh, and it is connected to my npg sql what i will do is i will restore this server into another region and then we will try to connect to that right so what i will do is i will go back to the resource group i will add a new postgres sql here
right and uh, so right now we have option of either creating a single server or a hyperscale uh, right now uh, today i am not discussing about hyperscale uh, but this is also an interesting interesting option uh, available to you to deploy on for now i am deploying a single server i click on create i will provide a region here first before that i let me uh, provide a name npg sql2 this is what my server name would be and i want to restore it from a backup so i click on backup uh, it you will see that i can now choose my existing server and then tell you uh, then ask it to create a new server using the backup geo redundant backup of this uh, uh, server right uh, i can might as well create in southeast asia or some other region so let me uh, use east asia this time right as a paired region here uh, i will choose east asia uh, by default when you uh, do a restore of the backup it will take the same uh, storage and compute capability you can reduce that after the creation of the server but right now what i'm doing is i'm taking the backup uh, of my existing server here which is npg sql which you saw which is available in southeast asia and connecting uh, recovering it to a new server in the east asia region right i click on review and create and click on create so by the time it uh, gets uh, created uh, we will uh, look for other demos and once this is created I'll, i'll come back to this right so you saw what i did right i what i did was i uh, created a new postgre sql uh, and not just that i created it through a restore from the geo restore right now let's look at monitoring and some diagnostic logs till this uh, uh, restore happens from the diagnostic uh, monitoring ca capability right when you go to the postgre sql server you will see that uh on the azure portal itself i have lot of matrix that i can add and monitor my server on right so this can be for example i want to look at what is the io percentage on my server uh i want to look at uh, what is the memory used by my server right all those dashboards can be created here and you can continuously monitor it uh, to look at what is the kind of resource that are being utilized uh, what i like to do is i like to pin it back to a dashboard so that as a azure uh, administrator or as a dba you can have one dashboard through which you can monitor the entire server i will show you what that dashboard uh, what i have configured here so you see i have configured cpu i have configured the io capabilities i have configured the memory on my server on this dashboard and i get to see what's happening in the past one uh, past 6 uh, hour actually similarly i can look at what are the maximum numbers of connection that have come to this i can refresh this uh, to show me the latest data i can look at how many how much of log is my server using what is the backup uh, storage my server is using and what is the storage uh, that my uh, data base is using right so uh, all this can be monitored through this uh, similarly i can create multiple uh, dashboards like this i can configure the auto refresh also i can uh, say uh, how uh, how uh fast i want this to be uh, refreshed right all those detail can be configured here let's go back to uh, my uh, postgre server right so that's the uh, monitoring part and as usual i uh, you, from the usual uh, activity perspective you can look at that as well right uh, if you know about the uh, this particular thing pg_stat_activity that view is also available here right you can look at what are the available users that are uh, connected to my uh, server all that capability is available through here as well apart from that uh, if you remember i was talking about the diagnostic uh, logging capability right let me show you a little detail about that so here you can as i said you can con configure multiple matrix 
you can infer, uh, also configure alerts you can configure rules uh, where you can say that if the cpu goes above 90% for 5 minutes send me an alert uh, or if somebody tries to uh, if the active number of connections go above 100 then send me alert all those capability uh, can be configured here i will show you a different thing which i have done which is the diagnostic setting essentially with diagnostic setting all these dashboard metrics all the pg stat uh, activity all your postgres sql log can be streamed to uh, as i said log analytics or it can be archived to storage or it can be sent to event hub to configure uh, it to go to other um, uh, things like um, uh, third party tools also right so you can configure postgre logs to be sent there you can even send runtime statistics of your queries your wait statistics can be sent and all the metrics like the cpu the io usage and all that can be sent here right i will show you one diagnostic setting one which i have done which uh, which is this one so i am sending all these details to my log analytics which is uh, in the same subscription uh, uh, this is the log analytic uh, workspace where that data is going i will show you what it looks like let's go back to this portal and this is my log analytics uh, workspace where all the postgre related data is uh, being sent now if you click on logs under the log analytics uh, here you have to obviously pre create this log uh, analytics uh, workspace before right if you click on logs here you have lot of inbuilt queries that are given to you out of the box which can be used for postgre for example when did you have the auto uh, auto vacuum event tell me show me when was the server restarted last how many unauthorized connections or uh, show me things like the slowest queries or queries uh, which were run so let me run this simple query which is the query statistics uh, okay now what is happening here is that there are some uh, okay because this server is not used uh, much you will not see lot of data here it is a demo server right so if let's say if i remove all this right and i run and i want it to show me all the uh, events that were me- measured right so you will see all these events uh, which are getting captured into my uh, log analytics workspace right Uh, this particular message is when the checkpoint last started in my database server right and similarly these kind of things are available to you right so not just this you can even uh, do things like i want to uh, you want to um, filter it by uh, let's say i want to uh, show only the error where where error level s is equal to uh, don't show me the logs one show me only the error ones right so i can say something like this show me all the errors which have been logged into my workspace right it is showing for the last 24 hours if i say for the last 7 days uh okay nothing here as well let's go for uh a longer duration then hmm okay i said error right uh, let's remove this because i remember there was a error which uh, was displayed during my last demo okay anyways uh, i will show you another thing which i created on top of it but these are some of the queries which you can run and you can even create a alert rule based on the query right which uh, which can be like okay whenever there is a panic level of uh, error uh, uh, created in my log file send me an error right uh, send me a email i have done a similar thing here which you will see uh, under alerts so if you go to alerts you will see that i have created a rule already on this 
which means that whenever my postgre uh, server is shut down or it is uh, doing any uh, restarts send me a email right so this is what the query is if you see here from azure diagnostic whenever in the postgre uh, log you see a message which contains something like database system was shut down or is ready to accept what it will do is based on that it will send me an alert right and this is this you will see in the action uh, group here right so whenever there is an uh, a shutdown or restart it will send me a error uh, email to uh, this uh, email id here right and i will show you uh, some error which i have got i have not started my outlook but uh, in my outlook email uh, you will see some of the errors which i got in the previous uh, uh okay one minute just give me a moment i'm trying to search the let's search for shutdown yeah so you see this error message which came to me a um, few days back right on 14th july to be precise this is because my postgre sql uh, uh, server was shut down right so you can configure these kind of alerts not just on memory cpu but also on events like if there is any error that is thrown by your uh, postgre sql or my sql if there is a log uh, postgre sql error log where there is a new message which is logged about a server shutdown or a client which is trying to uh, connect all those th kind of events can be uh, configured to send you a email right so that's one uh, demo the other demo i wanted to show was on my uh, new database server which got created Yes, sir. Can hear somebody. Is there any question? Uh, I think we got a question. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, somebody uh, is uh, asking about brief intro on Cosmos DB. Uh, okay, I don't think. Uh, uh, okay, let's let's see if I have time. We will do that a little later. I have lot of demos to show. So let me go ahead with that first. Okay. Is that okay, okay Mehdi? Uh, okay, uh, and, and I have another question. That uh, uh -huh. do you have uh, any uh, MySQL demo here? Yes, Did yes. You? I will show you a MySQL demo also. Oh. Uh, okay. okay. Uh, in fact, whatever I am showing you is available on uh, MySQL also. The log analytics, all that capability is available there also. Okay. Anyway, this is the new server which I created. If you remember, this is the new server which got created, uh, and these are the uh, uh, databases which got uh, uh, restored from there. So let's try to connect to that, right? So I'm going to quit from here, and I'm going to connect to my other server now, right? With the same uh, setting, which is the NPG SQL, and you will see that it says it cannot connect to. Okay, uh, I have to change the username also. Right, it will ask for. Uh, it will say that your IP is not uh, allowed to connect. Right, this is essentially uh, uh, what is called as the uh, firewall level uh, prevention. Right, so whenever you create a new server, make sure. that under connection security you go ahead and add, add those uh, ip rules otherwise nobody will be able to connect to that right so i will add this as my home ip and this is the ip uh, so i'm going under my server the new server created under the connection security i am adding this ip right and clicking on save and uh, while it is updating let's try to connect to it and you will see that i am able to connect now right previously it was not able to connect because that ip was not white listed uh, the moment you add that ip into the firewall you are now able to connect right so be uh, this is very important thing which you need to be aware of uh, whoever is trying uh, wants to connect to this new server you need to make sure that the firewall rule is added for that 
or else you need to add the particular vnet through which they are going to connect you remember the vnet endpoints right you need to add that vnet endpoint uh, you need to create a vnet endpoint and add that virtual network so that anybody from that network should be able to connect to this server right so that is the connectivity and uh, the demo essentially on this which i wanted to show uh, there is uh, some uh, okay let's go ahead now other uh, capability that we give on azure open source databases is the capability to use replication now this is an out of the box feature which is given to you by using the native replication capability so if you are a mysql uh, dba you know what is bin log right bin log replication so you can use the bin log replication to create multiple replicas and the idea there is that let's say if you have this kind of a scenario where there is a master server and one uh, application which is writing data into that that master you can create up to 5 replicas from that master and you can distribute the writers or your application also whenever it is trying to do a read connection to your database you can distribute that to your replicas and from this what you can do is basically you can create cluster of mysql uh, databases in active passive format and you will be able to increase the scalability of your uh, service so you can imagine your bi reports going to uh, the other host uh, your read uh, applications are going to the replica and read write applications are going to the master server right so this kind of capability is offered on mysql it is also offered on postgre this is a old slide not updated uh, but it is not in preview right now it is ga so you can create that so i will show you a typical demo here uh, where what you will do is i will have a one mysql master server and one read replica created and i will deploy a proxy sql in a ubuntu vm uh, you can choose any other vm here wherever you can deploy proxy sql on and then we will fire certain queries and we will see how it works right so for those who don't know proxy sql proxy sql is basically a proxy which you uh, can install to uh, do intelligent redirections of read write and write uh, read workloads to your database servers right it works with mysql uh, it can do things like connection pooling it can do things like uh, caching of data as well and uh, in uh, query redirection also now why this is needed right uh um, you will see that when you create a replica uh what azure does is it creates a new replica with a different host name right so either you need to add that host name connection string in your application and your application should be aware which is my read replica and which is my master server so that it can redirect right most of the time your applications are not aware or are not coded like that right so this is where you can use mysql Uh, proxy sql to intelligently redirect all the read queries to read replica i will show you this demo here okay now let's show let me show you what that uh, system looks like uh i'll go on a mute for few seconds ah uh, one minute okay uh, thank you guys i'm back uh, so essentially um, this is my my sql resource group where you will see that i have a replica server of my uh, master server here right so if you want to see i will go to my master my sql server and if i go into the replication this is where you add replica so you would simply click on add replica you say which region you give it a name you say which region you want that replica to be deployed you click on okay and automatically a replica is created and you can then uh, use this for your read replicas right so here what i have done is there is one uh, server in the southeast asia which is my master server 
and there is another server in east asia which is my replica right and i have uh, uh, ubuntu vm which i have deployed here this vm uh, uh, which is deployed here right in my migration rg uh, resource group and this ubuntu vm is having a proxy sql installed on that i will show you uh, that detail here so this is my vm that i was talking about and uh, from here you can look at uh, uh, i have this uh, proxy sql uh, service created here right and it is active uh, uh, listening to my calls here right now if you know how proxy sql is deployed essentially when you deploy it there are two logins available to you one is the normal user login which you give to your app to connect to the databases and the another one is an admin login which is given to you which is used to configure the database server and uh, the uh, the different username passwords right uh, so let me log into my uh, uh, my uh, po proxy sql uh, server right so i have that uh, in my history that uh, command so i will choose that this keyboard sorry i am using a new keyboard so that is creating a lot of problem okay so i will use this command to connect to my admin uh, console right and you will see that i can uh, look at what my different um, uh, servers have been uh, that i have configured here so you will see i'm uh, i have configured n my my sql 1 right which is on azure and n my sql replica 1 which is created right uh, and i have configured this database server as my write group and the replica as my read group right and i have also created certain rules if you see there are rules also which have been created here uh, query rule so you will see select star from my sql underscore query underscore rules i have configured rules where i have set uh, that select star for updates and any updates go to my first group right and anything which select goes to the second group right all the uh, detail have been configured here and what i will do is now in uh, i will try to connect to my uh, my sql through the normal uh, user console and try to fire some uh, queries and then we will go back and see how many uh, queries we were redirected to second uh, server and how many queries were redirected to the first server so i will quit from here and again i want to see uh, my uh, my sql uh, ah so this is my so now i am connected to my my sql in the user mode in the 6033 uh, port and uh, through the uh, demo user now if i see how many databases are there on this server right okay i am not sure why this is slow let's go and see okay why is this showing as zero cpu one minute ah guys one minute guys i'm trying to re log in again to that okay so i'm logged in again if i try to do this will it work okay now it is working so i think there was some glitch here um, maybe my okay i'm not sure what it was we can look at that later but now if you see i'm logged into the uh, uh, my azure database through proxy sql you see i'm connected to uh, my local host on port 6033 which is where the proxy sql is running 
and I'm querying my database. So I will say, okay, use employees database, show what tables are there. Uh, so let's do select star from employees and I will there limit 10, right? So, okay, what I will do is I will uh, update this row in the through proxy SQL. So I'm doing update employees set uh, first underscore name equal to George where imp where imp underscore number is equal to one one ten thousand one. So one row has been updated. I will fire the select query again to see that the no uh, row has been updated. Right, all working fine. I'm going through proxy SQL and uh, connecting to my server here and everything seems to work fine. I can even monitor things like how many active connections I have right now to kind of give you some detail there. Uh, so there are, I'm not sure why it is showing, okay, because it's one minute delay, right? Uh, 30 minute, one minute apply i'm not sure why everything is showing a zero but anyways okay so i'm connected here now what i will do is i will quit from here and i will log into my uh, my sql uh, console which is my admin console right and here there is a query which is given to you which is called as stats underscore my sql underscore query underscore uh, I forget. I keep forgetting that. <laughs> uh, one minute. I uh, one minute. Huh? There is a blog on this which I uh, read to uh, configure this. I can share that blog also later with you. But uh, the table name is called as digest. Yeah, query digest. So you will see that uh, from here, what all queries were fired, uh, the, this uh, basically keeps the statistics of all the queries that has been fired through proxy SQL to your uh, uh, MySQL cluster. And it will tell you where those queries ended up. So if you will, if you will see, we were doing this uh, select queries, it went to the host group two. Uh, whenever I have fired an update, it went to host group one. Right. Uh, even things like sh uh, show databases, show table, all that uh, queries went to host group one. Right, which is my read uh, read write replica. Uh, sorry, the master server, and the other one went. Uh, all the select queries went to the replicas. Right. So this is through. Uh, this is essentially uh, what you can uh, do on. Uh, the scalability perspective for your MySQL. You can use things like proxy SQL to uh, uh, intelligently route your uh, read writes uh, to the master, uh, to the principal server, uh, primary server, and the read queries to your uh, read replica server. So that's about it from my side for this session. Uh, I think I am pretty much on time. So we saw a lot of things here. We saw what are the different services which are available. Uh, we saw uh, what is the architecture of the databases on Azure. We saw a few demos on uh, how do you create a new service and how do you restore? What can you do for monitoring? And I also uh, showed you a demo of how do you configure a proxy SQL to uh, leverage the read replica feature on uh, my, Pro, my SQL. Uh, the same thing is available on Postgre also. You can use uh, PG pool uh, to do uh, connection uh, redirection there as well. So with that, uh, I will hand it over to the organization organizer and see if there are any more questions here. Uh, thank you, Naginder, for your uh, very uh, informative uh, session. Uh, I'm uh, seeing a question uh, from an user that uh, can you uh, brief about Cosmos DB, how it works in uh, Azure? 
So, uh, yes, definitely. I'll talk uh, briefly about what Cosmos DB is. Cosmos yes. DB is basically a NoSQL database on Azure. And what uh, it offers you is basically a document store on Azure, which can be uh, connected through various uh, uh, f uh, wire uh, APIs. For example, you can use the Mongo API to connect to PostgreSQL. Uh, sorry, Cosmos DB. You can even use things like uh, SQL APIs to connect to Cosmos DB. Essentially, it is a planet scale no sql ser uh, service which is a av database available on the azure and uh, you can store json documents there and use it as a graph database or a sql uh, uh, sql uh, front end or you can you also use things like cassandra or mongo apis to connect to it right uh, I, I cannot give you any further detail because i'm out of time Maybe yes. in some other session we can talk more details about that. Okay, uh, and I got some other questions like, uh, can we use some uh, uh, admin tool like PC admin or uh, HadeSQL or PHP My admin for administrating the base My MariaDB or P, uh, MySQL and uh, yes, yes, PGSQL? yes, yes. Any tool that you connect to MySQL right now on you can use the same thing also. For example, uh, here I'm using MySQL work, Workbench, Workbench okay. but you can use DBWare or there are a lot of community mm -hmm. tools which are available, which can which can be used to connect to that. Oh, and uh, uh, one final question, basically. Uh, yes. Since uh, Microsoft Azure is ensuring the 99.99% uh, availability, so is there any uh, requirement of replication for a mid uh, mid level organization since everything is restored within uh, four or five seconds as you told uh, if i get your question correctly you are saying for mid size organization yes. how can they leverage this service right yes, uh, yes. i think um, even for a mid size organization uh, I would not say that uh, it depends on the size of the organization. I would say it depends on the criticality of your application. Yes. If you are using a website, front end website, which my, your customers will use to log in and transact, you don't want any downtime there, right? So mm -hmm. there you can use uh, these kind of services with a high SLA to guarantee that your website or your application will never be down. But let's say if you have a tier two or tier three application which does not require that kind of an SLA, uh, in in these service there is something called as uh, okay where is my okay there is something called as basic edition of uh, service also available. I will show you what it looks like. If you go to pricing tier, you can also uh, use the basic tier which is only up to two cores. Uh, uh, there is no IO performance guarantee. There is no 99.99% uh, SLA available here. It is a very cheap service. You can use that also for uh, tier three or tier four application uh, or even for your development effort, right? You don't need to use general purpose or memory optimized for your development environment, right? Does that answer your question maybe? Uh, okay, yes, thank you. Thank you.